Hey everyone, this is the first in what I hope becomes a long series of quick, helpful videos. So I'll say it right up front. If you want more of these, slam the like button, share the video, boot it into the algorithm's face, and drop a comment telling me what printing tips or myths you want me to tackle next. Right, let's go. Hi, I'm Ross, this is Fohammer Videos, and today we're talking about how to get perfect exposure when resin printing, and why that's probably the worst thing you could aim for. If you've seen any of my review videos, you'll have seen this flag exposure test. I use it in every review for three reasons. One is because it's the one I started with. Two, it's got a measurable result you can count, literally. And three, because I use it every time, it gives us results comparable across all of my resin printer reviews. And when we see this, a lot of people, understandably, focus on the center of the test, where the little logo lines up. Because someone once said to do that when it first came out, and years later, I still see that advice going around. And it seems logical, it does. If the lines are sharp, you're good. If they're mushy, you're not. But that method, it's subjective. What actually works and what you don't need to question anybody about when you see it, and what I always recommend is checking the holds and posts on the left side of this test. More posts than holes, overexposed. More holes than posts, underexposed. Equal number of each, balanced, perfect, yeah? It's not a guess, it's not subjective, it's countable, measurable, and that's why I love it. Everything else on this test, logos, resolution bars, a ramp, it's just detail sampling. It shows you what your printer can do, but not what it can survive doing. That's the catch. Perfect XY exposure doesn't always equal reliable results. Accuracy isn't strength. It won't tell you if your cured layers will survive being peeled off the release film, or if your delicate little sword blade is gonna give up halfway through a print. Some resins stretch and bend, some snap, some do both. If you take your perfect exposure and print a pre-supported model, odds are something's gonna break. And let's be honest, most of us are printing pre-supported models. Now, whether they're well-supported or not is another matter. So then we have to ask a question, and this is to ourselves. What do we actually want? Successful prints? which means most of the time, probably nudging the exposure up slightly. Yes, we'll lose a bit of detail, but we'll also lose the frustration of mid-print failures. Now, before I move on, and because this is the first one I'm doing in this format, I need to give a quick shout out to this video's sponsor. It's sponsored by Elegoo. They paid for the time to make it, but they don't get to approve the content or my opinion. That's all me. We've agreed to do two videos to start, and if they help enough people, we'll probably do more. So again, like I said in the intro, if you like this, like it, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Right, back in. So you're probably wondering, why even bother using that flat exposure test at all? Well, for me, it's now something I started with, and again, makes printers comparable across all of my videos. But the main reason? Speed. This prints in about 12 minutes at 30 micron layers, and it uses only 1.6 milliliters of resin. The cones of calibration, for example, uses 2.7 milliliters of resin and can take roughly five times longer. So I use that flat XP test to do nothing more than get me in the exposure ranger's ballpark. But if you've got a printer like the Saturn IV Ultra or Mars V Ultra, or you can run an RARF test on other brands, yeah, you can run multiple exposures on one plate. So maybe skip the flat test and just jump straight to what we're gonna cover next, which honestly is one of two options. You could just print pre-supported models, and if they fail, bump up the exposure and try again. For a faster way of getting to it, because it, this is now shorter than a mini, yeah, print the cones of calibration, and again, increase or decrease the exposure and try again. Now, whilst the cones does have parts on it which measure X, Y accuracy really well, what we want to actually aim for here is support strength. You want the success cones to hold and the fail cones to fail. That's the Goldilocks zone, and yes, we probably do have to overexpose a bit beyond the perfect exposure balance. But if you're gonna run this, I highly recommend you having a full read of Table Flip Foundry's website as to what you need to do. But the key thing to follow, I would say, is the flow chart on that webpage follow it. But it also proves that perfection isn't the goal. Only one route to the goal has perfect. The others are about acceptable results. And that's just fine. Not every resin and printer combo is going to print perfect. What we want them to print are the most accurate models possible successfully. 
And I would argue that success is a bigger goal than 100% accurate, especially when 99% accuracy is often achievable. But again, just be aware, the cones of calibration aren't gospel. They're also a guide. Pre-supported doesn't equal well-supported. If you want fewer surprises, use models from reputable sources in regard to supports. I regularly rate the ones listed on Atlas 3D's Creative Partners page because Atlas 3D kind of set the gold standard amongst supporting miniatures. And one last thing, even if your exposure is spot on, you can find that prints still fail depending where they are on the plate, and that's thanks to uneven UV spread, especially on newer machines with COB light sources. But that's going to be content for another quick video, and if you want that, again, I'm going to encourage the liking, subscribing, and sharing thing. Overall, the big picture, exposure test, fast, instant detail check. Cones takes a bit longer, reliable strength check, and also covers XY accuracy as more of a secondary thing. If your goal is the sharpest detail, use the XP rangefinder and count the number of posts and holes. That is a measurable way to find out what the results are, but this may leave you supporting your own models entirely. If you want your models to print reliably, maybe use that test and bump up the exposure slightly, or trust the cones. But the whole point of this video was, I hope it encourages some people to stop chasing perfection, which is a comment I see on most of my videos most of the time, what's the most accurate printer? Instead, start chasing results. Perfect exposure isn't always the best. I want to say thanks again to Elegoo for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. A huge shout out goes to our channel members whose names are on screen now. And if you've got a tip that you want covered, drop it in the comments. Until next time, smoke me a kipper. I'll be back for breakfast. Fohammer out.